I, oh, I am not in focus. <laughs> I am about to go somewhere very exciting to see someone I'm sure you all know. And everybody has been asking me about her, so I thought I should probably go visit her and explain a little bit about where she's been. <laughs> so let's go and see a certain kitten. <laughs> Some of you may remember that I had a little Persian kitten called Poppy. One of you was actually confused that she was called Ruby. Not sure where that name came from, but beautiful name, it was my grandmother's name. But that was not what my cat was called. I don't know why I'm going into detail about this. Poppy. <laughs> Poppy is the kitten I got with the man I married in 2018 who passed away. Since coming back to YouTube, one of my most requested questions is where is Poppy? Where's the cat? Where is she? Why did you give her up? So I wanted to touch on this subject a little bit and delve into the story of Poppy and I and our great adventures together and I want to start from the beginning, from the very beginning when we got Poppy because it was an important time and I feel like it was a turning point in my mental wellness and the wellness I was generally feeling. So for those of you who don't know, I got Poppy in 2018 when I had just got married to a man who was dying of terminal cancer. The thing is, when we got Poppy, I wasn't necessarily 100% on board with the decision. That feels weird to say out loud, but we're being open and honest and here we go. <laughs> when someone you are with, someone you care deeply about is dying, you want to do everything you can to make them feel comfortable, make them feel like they have lived their fullest life they possibly can. And he really wanted a cat, which was odd to me because he always wanted dogs. But that's by the by. The day after we got married, we went on a cat hunt and we couldn't just have any cat. It had to be a Persian cat. I'm not sure entirely why, but we were on the hunt for a Persian cat. <laughs> um, we went to some interesting places. I actually reported a few people to the RSPCA. The first place we went was on a farm and this farm had alpacas, which they didn't look well, they were like, they basically looked like anorexic sheep. I know alpacas aren't sheep, but that is what they looked like and they were not healthy. And we got taken to this um, barn where this elderly lady lived and she had about 20 kittens just surrounding her. And what was weird was that they weren't all the same breed of cat. If you're not into cats you probably think all cats look the same but there are so many different types of cats and you know you know when they're not the same like some had flat ears some were long haired some were short haired there was this one gorgeous little persian kitten who was so scrawny and so poorly kept and it broke my heart i actually left crying it was horrible and we reported them to the rspca because that was not okay. And I wasn't prepared to take on any of these cats because we were already going through a lot of stuff and we didn't want them to bring any infection into the house because obviously. So we reported them to the RSPCA. Eventually we came to this lovely little apartment. It was a little bit sketchy. And I would actually, before I continue this story, I want to say I promote adopt, don't shop. My personal preference is you always try to adopt where you can. There are so many animals in need of homes. They're gorgeous. Just go on the RSPCA website. I spend longer than I should on this website, but there are so many animals in need of help and support. Try to adopt before you go shopping around. So I was already a little bit apprehensive about going somewhere where potentially they were breeding cats unfairly. I really don't like the thought of it and I really don't like the thought of it now. But again, 
trying to be supportive and you know going along with things that I wouldn't necessarily choose but there we go, that's a side note. Anyway, we turned up at this lady's apartment. She was very, very lovely. She had loads of certificates and we saw in the corner of the room the most anti-social kitten I have ever known. All the other kittens were sort of running around and having a great time, running through their tunnels and she was just not having any of it. She was so anti-social and obviously that's the one we picked. So, bought her home, it was very lovely, had some cuddles and things, but she was not a lap cat whatsoever. She was very um, unaffectionate, which is fine. Again, most people who don't like cats probably think, well, all cats are unaffectionate, they hate people, we are just their slaves. But, you know, some cats like to snuggle and some cats like to sit on your lap. And she was great. She kept everyone entertained. We got a camera to look at her and it was fantastic. And then probably, I don't really remember timelines, but four or five days after we got her, maybe around then, we spent a lot of time in the hospice and eventually we were in the hospice full time. And Poppy was left at home more than I would like but my parents who are God sent human beings and I love them very much came all the way from the south uh, to look after her while I was in the hospice um, and they grew very attached to her obviously they also really like the underdog the undercat they like a bit of a misfit and uh, my dad felt an instant connection with her and it was brilliant. So as the weeks went on, they stayed there and I think it was about 12 days maybe that they were there and obviously I came home um, and I was alone because um, the man I married had passed away and so I was there suddenly on my own with this cat who was so gorgeous but I hadn't bonded with and I guess maybe possibly built a resentment too. I don't know if I could resent a cat, but because she was here and the man I had married wasn't, it just felt, I don't know, maybe I just felt less of a connection with her because I never really got to get a connection in the first place, if that makes any kind of sense. So I desperately tried to stay in the flat that I was in and I was going backwards and forwards to my hometown and I somehow, in my grief-stricken state, thought it was a good idea to take a cat on the train with me. I do not condone this behaviour. Looking back, I think I was an idiot, but I was very unaware of my actions at the time, not that that's an excuse, but you should not take a cat regularly on the train. They're not meant for that life. It's just, it's just wrong and I'm annoyed at myself for doing it now. But because I didn't want to leave her on her own ever and I didn't trust her with anybody else, I wanted to look after her, I shipped her backwards and forwards from Western Supermare to my parents' home, which is about four hours on the train. And I am really ashamed of that. I really don't like that I did that. I don't know why I did it. All I knew was I wanted her to stay with me I wanted to keep her safe, I wanted to look after her, and it was all the right intentions, but I definitely went the wrong way about it. After a few weeks of living in that flat on my own, I realized I couldn't afford it. It was just, it was too expensive. I was on my own, I was trying to keep a cat alive, I was trying to keep myself alive, and I was also dealing with complications of the previous few weeks and months. I decided to move back home, and that was a reluctant decision because my bedroom is teeny, 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 tiny, and I also had Poppy in tow. Now, my family have another family cat called Monty. He is gorgeous. And what I was saying earlier about having a cuddly cat, he is cuddly and snuggly and he's just so lovely, but he's very old and was very old at the time. And I was worried he'd be grumpy and hurt Poppy and I was really overprotective of her. I was like, nope, nobody's gonna go near this cat. She's not going outside. She's not, you know, I'm just gonna protect her in this bubble of overprotective, ickiness that nobody really wants, but there we go, I'm giving it to her anyway. <laughs> so I moved back home and I was very overprotective and paranoid. I made sure she was in the room I was in and it was just a bit of a crazy situation. After living at home for about six months in that kind of regime, my dad 
grew very fond of Poppy and I gradually became to learn that I could leave her in a room without me in it. I could go out, I could, you know, experience life without having to look after this cat full term because at the end of the day she is a cat and she is very independent and really doesn't care if I'm there or not. So in this time she grew very affectionate with my dad and she loves the family cat Monty and my mum is in love with her. So after six months of living at home I eventually got a flat moved out. This flat wouldn't allow cats initially but after I think a four week period and after an inspection they'd come in and check that everything was okay and then would possibly sign me off of having a cat. So I left Poppy at home and in that time my dad built her a little garden outside which meant she couldn't jump over the fence but she had space to run around and stretch her legs and get fresh air. She got a lot healthier, not that she was unhealthy, but she just was a lot more confident and she just loved it. And then suddenly four weeks turned into sort of six months and then we were in COVID. So I realized that Poppy was a bit of a gift to my parents. My dad adores her to the extent he built her a garden. <laughs> My family cat tolerates her. I was gonna say love, but I think he tolerates her. And they get on really well. She gets so much attention and there's almost always somebody at home. And so I decided it was best for her for once to let her stay put. And this was the first decision I actually made for her, which was difficult for me to admit, but all all her life that I'd had her, she was getting on trains, she was being left with strangers, she was, she was with an emotional wreck of a mother who couldn't look after herself, let alone a cat. So I finally, however hard it was at the time, said to my parents, if you would like to keep her and if you would like her to be yours, you can have her. And I think my dad was very thrilled by that decision because I think he was worried in the back of his head that I was going to take her away from him. And I think they almost certainly would have ended up with another kitten, but they are very happy to have Poppy. That is where we are at now. Poppy is at home with my parents and she is so, so well looked after and she is so spoiled. You should see how my dad treats her. And anytime I speak to my dad, he always talks about how they snuggle up together and watch telly or they go up to bed and she snuggles in his arm. And she is just so happy and much happier than she would have been had she been with me. Because obviously since then I've moved around a lot. I have been abroad and I have gotten into a new relationship and all sorts of different things where she couldn't have coped with that it would have been stressful and it would have been so unfair for her that would have been such a selfish decision for me to make whereas now she's happy she's loved and I get to go and visit her whenever I want and my parents adore her and are very very happy to have her so that is where Poppy is she is happy she is loved she is still very much in my life and I get regular picture updates from my mum and I'm really happy where she is. I'm really, really happy that as a family we made the decision that she was going to stay put and be looked after there and it's brilliant. I'm really, really, really glad. Thank you though for those of you who were just worried about her because I know animals are so important. They are so important to me. I just regret acting selfishly around her and thinking I could be the one to protect her and I could be the one to look after her when I was in no stable state to do so. So thank you for checking in and making sure she's okay, but she is wonderful, she is perfect, and I am so glad and grateful for my parents for looking after her and being the family she deserves and me being the crazy aunt, I guess, sister, sister, that comes to visit her and shoves a camera in her face. She is so antisocial. Poppy. Hi. Hello. How's it going? 
Come here. Come on. Okay. Hi. Hi. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope it answered some questions as to where Poppy is and where she's been and that she's happy, healthy and safe. Thank you so, so much. I hope you're all having a lovely day, a lovely life and I will see you in the next one. Lots of love guys. End of credits fam. Oh, it's really hot up here. Really, really warm. And oh, I haven't shown you my new upgrade. This is how much water you're meant to drink in a day. It's a lot, but I manage it more days than not. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here and being a part of this wonderful community. I hope you're all well. Let me know in the comments how you're feeling. Obviously put in the credits fam so I know. And I will see you in the next one. Lots of love guys. Mwah. Also, do you want to see how I've been sitting? I don't know if you can, I'm having to lift the whole tripod like this. I really need a chair. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Bye guys.